I'm Earlene Bennett. Welcome to the very first session of Mamaw's Cooking at Home. Uh, I cook every Sunday for my family and I wanted to share some of my home cooking recipes with you at home and I hope you enjoy them. First thing off, I'm going to put my hair up because I don't like to get hair in the way while I'm cooking. On the menu today we're going to have meatloaf, mashed potatoes, cauliflower, and deviled eggs. First thing I'm going to do is put some about eight eggs in cold water on the stove. We're going to put those on and when they come to a hard boil, let them boil about 12 minutes and then you can just turn them off and let them set or you can let them cook a little longer. Once you turn them off, pour off the hot water and fill it with cold water and that will set your eggs. They'll never turn green. They'll be nice and yellow. Next I'm going to start our meatloaf. Got about three pounds of hamburger here, ground chuck. My family loves meatloaf, so I make it pretty often. I'm going to add in about a one sleeve of crackers. I'm just going to crumble them right up. If your meat is really lean, you might not add as many crackers. I'm going to put in two eggs. This will help bind your meatloaf and keep it together nicely. A lot of people say their meatloaf falls apart. The eggs will prevent it from falling apart. Also, I'm going to add a little salt. I don't use pepper. You'll learn that about me. I don't like pepper. So if anybody wants pepper at my table, they have to do it on their plate. Then I'm going to put in some onion. Dice it up nicely. Depending on the size of your onion, you may want one small, maybe a medium onion. I've got two here, but I may not use all of it. Like small pieces. I may have some help in a little bit. When my grandkids get here, sometimes I put them to work be my sous chef in the kitchen. I may just use one onion. It looks like it's quite a bit. Onion gives it a really good flavor. Some people don't like onion, but when it's cooked, it turns really sweet. Also, investing in a good knife helps things go quicker in the kitchen. Put that onion in there. Looks like a lot, but it's a lot of ground beef there, so. You want good flavor throughout your meatloaf. Today I'm going to put in a little bit of green bell pepper. But I'm not going to put it in all of it because my grandson doesn't like bell pepper. So I'm going to put in about half of the meatloaf and separate it. You always got to cook for those finicky palates. I love cooking for my grandkids, and they love eating. <laughs> Let me tell you that. My grandson told me last week he wanted to invest in me getting one of those food trucks. Not a bad idea, I don't guess. Maybe if I were younger, though. I 
I'll probably make some sweet tea in a little bit because they like sweet tea too. It's quick and easy. Always a favorite drink around our home. in a little bit of ketchup right in the mix. A little extra flavor. I'm going in. You can use a spoon but to mix it this usually works better. You just kind of mix that all together. Turn it, squeeze it. A little messy. I'm going to actually add a few more crackers because I think it needs it. And I'll show you the secret what I do to my meatloaf before I cook it. Okay, we're about ready here. Everything's coming together. It's got a good consistency. Don't be afraid to get in there. Okay, now what I'm going to do, since everybody in my family likes an end of a meatloaf, I'll make little mini meatloafs and then they cook quicker and then everybody gets an end. Just get your ball, kind of form it like an oval, pat it down a little bit and just keep adding them to the pot. They don't have to be perfectly even but if one of them's bigger than another just pinch a piece off and keep going. Okay, I've made about six little mini loaves, so now I'm going to add the bell pepper into the next batch. Don't add, I'm not adding all of it. I don't think I need it. Don't want too much, just a little extra flavor. Mix that in, and then make the remainder of your little mini loaves. Ready to go into the oven, but first we're going to pop the little mini loaves with ketchup. Put a generous amount. If you don't like as much, then go lightly on it. But we like a lot of ketchup. It'll bake and make a nice little crust on top of the meat loaves. There's nothing like a cold meatloaf sandwich the second day. Leftovers are really good with meatloaf. Yeah, if there's anything left. Okay, that there they are. I'm going to cover them with a piece of foil. Put them in a 350 oven for about an hour. I'm going to let them cook for about 30 minutes or so, covered. And then I'm going to take off the foil and let them finish it nice and brown. You'll see them in a few minutes. Now I'm going to make some sweet tea. I've already put on a pan of water to come to a boil. I have about 13 of the small tea bags waiting for the water to boil. And I filled my con gallon jug container about halfway full of water. This is my secret to getting the tea really nice and sweet and smooth and not sugary tasting. I put about a cup and a half of sugar in the container while I'm waiting for the water to boil. And then I want you to just make sure and swirl it and stir it. Make sure that sugar dissolves. 
I'll stir it three or four times before I put the tea in. That sugar will dissolve nicely and it'll be smooth, sweet tea. If you don't want sugar in it, don't put any in it and use sweetener however you like it. But you'll see once this is completely dissolved, it'll be clear again. So I'll just let that go. Then watch the water. We'll put the tea bags in. Okay, our water's boiling. I'm going to add the tea bags. Just put them in there and kind of make sure you dunk them. Make sure everything's in the water bath so it all steeps nicely. Put them all in there, cover it up, and let it set about 15 minutes to steep. Welcome back. This is my lovely granddaughter, Anne Marie. And she's going to help me make one of the family's favorite desserts. It's so easy anybody could do it. We just call it a pudding mix dessert. You take two packages of chocolate pudding, two packages of vanilla pudding. We'll use some graham crackers and some Cool Whip and a few chocolate chips and it's magic. So Ann's going to make the vanilla pudding first. Four cups of cold milk. Then you add your two packages of vanilla pudding. And I'm doing the vanilla first because I'm a little bit lazy. If I mix up the vanilla, I can use the same utensil to stir the chocolate without having to wash it. Any extra little step is helpful. So I'll turn the whisk over to Anne Marie. Instant pudding takes only about five minutes to set up, so this is such a quick dessert. You can use cooked pudding if you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and pour my milk for the chocolate. Sprinkle in my chocolate pudding. My grandkids could eat this stuff every week. I think Michael could eat it the most, actually. Pretty sure you should. It is Michael's his favorite. And special. brother Michael. It's his favorite. And it's easy to make, so why not? Splurge on Sunday dinner. I think this is good now. Okay. See, I'm just going to transfer the utensil right over. It doesn't hurt the chocolate pudding at all. So, Ann, if you want to start crumbling up a little bit of the graham crackers, you'll just, you can use your favorite cookie. We prefer to use graham crackers. You can use vanilla wafers. You mean use the cold packet? Uh, just cover the bottom right now. We'll make a couple of layers. You'll put in a layer of graham crackers. Then you'll put one of your puddings, whichever one you want to go first. And then a layer of Cool Whip. And then a second layer of crackers and the other layer of pudding and top it all with Cool Whip. I'm glad you wouldn't do the vanilla. The chocolate likes to clump a lot more. <laughs> than the it can be a little does. bit more vigorous. Make sure the lumps are out. But you can feel it thickening up as you do it. And learning all my cooking secrets. Okay, I can just get rid of this. Let that set up. And if you can see the tea jar there, that sugar has dissolved. And it looks like water again. It's ready for the tea whenever it's done. I make that tea, I make the tea the way you do at my house, and Dave's friend came over and he was like, this is the best tea I've ever had. <laughs> well, good. And I was like, yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. More? Or? You can finish that one. Okay. But you want to make sure your pudding's thick before you put it in there. Otherwise, one layer will run into the second layer. Yeah. Like I said, it takes about five minutes to set up. This one's almost there. But we'll wait a few minutes. Okay, our tea has been steeping. 
be careful this can still be pretty hot I pick them up and I squeeze out the excess bags over there see it's steaming I'm serious it's pretty hot but I've been cooking a long time and I can stand the temperatures so you're going to pour your steep tea right in your sugar water Stir it up. Hopefully it's really good tea. And it's going to let me know in just a minute. Have a nice glass. Plenty of ice. That's why it's called iced tea. Show them how pretty that glass is, Ann. That's really good. Thanks, we Mama. love iced tea. Now we're going to put together the pudding stuff. And sorry, we had to pause there for a minute. The cameraman and the other crewmen keep taking the chocolate chips. What can I, I they say? Have, they get that stuff. We said they love this dessert. All right, so I'm going to... First, we like to put the chocolate pudding in. So we are going to put the chocolate pudding in first. Or you can put the vanilla in first, whichever you prefer. And you can use other flavors. You don't have to use chocolate and vanilla. Whatever you like. There's a lot of different flavors. But we always have to have chocolate. Right in on top of the crumbled up graham crackers. Just make a little layer and smooth it out. Okay, and then we're in and smooths that out, then we're going to put a layer of Cool Whip on that. Our next layer is going to be this lovely Cool Whip. You can use real whipped cream. I've done that before. They love that too. A little bit of extra effort, but it's easy to make. I'll show you one day. Tastes much better. But Cool Whip will work. Okay, nicely done. We'll put in a little layer of Cool Whip. I spoon it out in different sections. It's easier to spread that way. Because you want to completely hide the chocolate layer from the vanilla layer. You don't want to mix them yet. Michael leaves that part up till whenever he puts it in his bowl. Completely destroys it and makes it my two grandchildren, Michael and Jera, made this one year for Thanksgiving. Their mother had to work, and she put them in charge of making one of the desserts, which they wanted because, it, of course, it's their favorite. And they used double the amount of Cool Whip, and Stacy was pretty upset when we went to have pumpkin pie and didn't have any Cool Whip left for her pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, now we're going to put the vanilla layer. Oh, oops, sorry. I forgot the crackers. Another layer of graham crackers. Anne's here to keep me straight. You see how quickly this goes together. put on the vanilla layer. This time I think we use French vanilla. A little bit richer flavor. See how yellow it is. We used a casserole dish, a taller casserole dish, but you can use a flat rectangle pan. Works just as well. glass you can see the layers of the pudding mix. Our meatloaf is smelling good by the way. Because you 
you don't use timers, you just smell. No, I don't use timers. A lot of times I don't measure either, so we may have a problem when we when I start giving recipes. Yeah. You're just like, oh yeah, that looks good. I, I don't use a timer, I don't use a lot of measuring. So that's me. Right. I've been cooking it. Go ahead and put that on in. I've been cooking a few years, so my experience. I did teach Ann that when you're baking something to use your nose. When you can smell it, it's almost done. Taught her how to make peanut butter, or her grandfather did. I taught him how to make them, and then he taught Ann how to make them. Peanut butter swirl bars. Now I'll make them better than you do. Well, okay. It's close. As good. <laughs> I've been cooking for many, many years. You think you get tired of it, but actually I don't. I'm trying to find new recipes for my meat and potatoes husband. <laughs> or my starch, starch, and starch grandson. You should start mixing the ingredients and then make it look like the old stuff. Mm -hmm. No. To your edges. Yeah, no. I'm going to smooth that out and make it look nice and pretty. You don't want anything showing around your edges. Turn that for you. You should have done this part. You're much better than me. Just push it over right up to the edge. There we go. Now Ann will do the favorite. And, and they're hovering in the wings for the leftover chocolate chips, by the way. As soon as he's oh. yells cut, chocolate chips are goners. Just makes a pretty little decoration on top. You can use other toppings, whatever you like. One year for Christmas, you put M&M's on top. You did red and green, and you made a Christmas tree. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Pudding dessert. Put it in the refrigerator and let it get nice and cold while you eat your meal. Thank you, Ann. No problem. Okay, Ann and I are going to do deviled eggs now. I've cut them all in half, and as you can see, they're beautiful and yellow. No green edges at all. That key is once they come off of the heat, empty that hot water out and cover them with cold water. And you might have to change that two or three times till it stays cold. And Ann's going to start, just pop your yellows in there. And Ann's going to start smashing those. You want them really smooth. We'll use a whisk in a minute to stir in the other ingredients. Pop those eggs in there and smash them with a, a fork would probably work in. Would it give you better. So if they have a green shell, do they stay in the egg or something? If or they just... You left them in the hot water too long and then they start turning green. So the key to a perfect boiled egg is 12 minutes boiling water. I've never made deviled eggs before. So. Easy peasy. Two or three ingredients, and you think I would make back in the shell? Deviled eggs more as much as Dave loves deviled eggs. Ann's fiance Dave loves deviled eggs. I surprised him today by making deviled eggs. While Ann's smashing up, I'm gonna add a few other ingredients. A little bit of salt, not too much. A little bit of sugar. You want you don't want them sweet, but you want them just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon. Still smashing. We're gonna let her smash. I'm gonna add some Miracle Whip. Don't put too much. You'll, and you can add more in a minute if it looks too thin. Mustard. Need a little bit of tang to counteract that sweetness of the sugar. And then 
she's going to switch over to the whisk. Continue beating those up until they're smooth. I may have to add a little bit more. Maybe not that much. Probably a little more. Yeah. We'll try that much. I mean, you can still add more when you can, if you have to. And you want to stir these like everything. You want that really, really smooth. You don't want to taste any bumps in your and lumps in your deviled eggs. Give that a little taste. Good. Very good. I'm going to put a little bit more. Okay. Good job. Now we're going to get a spoon and start filling these. Let's get two spoons. We both can fill them. That over there, we'll just start filling them. And you've got more filling than what you took out, so you can be generous here and stack them up. That's fascinating that this is you. So they don't have to be perfect. You can use a decorator if you want to and swirl on these. Make a pretty shape out of them. But here, Sunday dinner, we're not trying to impress anybody. We just want some good home cooking. Nothing too fancy. Just put them right in there. Hey, uh oh, hey, hey. okay, now. <laughs> Looks like the deviled egg burglar is at it. That was Dave Ann's fiance. Oh, that he loves deviled eggs. I got the head shake of approval over there. Oh, so. he liked them good. Always taste your food while you're cooking. You may add need to add a little bit of salt, <laughs> a little bit more sugar. Depends. Taste test will make sure it's good and tasty before you set it on there the table. Go. There we go. Grandma's deviled eggs. One, two, three, easy. Here's our finished mini meatloafs. You can see they're nice and firm and very well done. Well, as you can see, the family's all sitting at the table. We're ready to eat. I thank you for being with us on the first episode of Memo Sunday Dinner. See you next time.